Hello there, it's me, Dave, the biggest High Guardian Spice hater a whole. Oh, uh, the the second biggest High Guardian Spice hater on Earth. Jesus, lobster, chill out. You're making me look bad. Anyway, I made a video a while back where I tried to fix this show. Uh, it was fine, but I thought I'd want to go a little bit more in depth on the whole magic system thing. See, magic in High Guardian Spice is uh, poorly developed, to say the least. I've talked about it so many times, so you probably already know what's wrong with it, but why don't we fix it? Give it the once over, find out what doesn't work, and make it better. I'm gonna mention some things that I've brought up in the past, but in a more refined package. And once again, I want to bring up my methodology for fixing these kind of things in this show. I don't want to change it so much that it ends up being the magic system for a completely different show. I am going to make some, I guess, big changes, but they're all going to be based on things that actually happen in the show itself, and ideas that I think could have been refined. And the things that are going to have the biggest impact on the overall plot are more so the things that I'm removing. There's a lot of fluff magic in this show that only exists for one episode and then gets forgotten about. For instance, in episode 10, a big part of the plot is based around this memory spell that Amaryllis casts. And spoiler alert, I'm going to be cutting that. So some things are going to have to be reworked. But I also want to create a magic system that's in the spirit of High Guardian Spice. Although I guess the spirit of High Guardian Spice would be garbage, wouldn't it? Also, I'm not going to be tackling the whole warriors thing. I know there's ways you can make fighters relevant in worlds with magic, but I'm not going to be going over that in this video. The wizards are going to be getting nerfed really hard, but I don't know if it's enough. Feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments down below. Now let's do this. Old and new magic. What are they? I'm not quite sure, and I don't think the writers knew either. I think I have some kind of grasp on what they were going for, but it was communicated very poorly. So let's fix it. I discussed this in my previous rework of High Guardian Spice, but I think it was implied in the narrative that new magic is what was causing the rot. Basically, new magic is polluting the environment and draining the energy out of the earth, and that makes it bad. At the very least, I think this is true. My main proposal was to have the villains be the ones selling the Terra Spheres, and thus they don't want anyone to figure out about the rot because that would cut into their profits. And working off of that plot idea, I think I came up with a good distinction between new and old magic that we can implement. In my version, every living thing from humans to trees to everything in between gives off a form of energy. And people who can manipulate this energy are magic users. The big distinction between old and new magic is that old magic uses your energy and new magic uses the planet's energy. We can call this energy whatever we want, key, chakra, girl boss energy, just whatever you want to call it. The main point is the energy is there and if you can manipulate it, you're a magic user. But the energy has to come from somewhere and there's always going to be an equivalent exchange, stop thinking about it. So for the sake of old magic, you just have your own energy and you can manipulate it within yourself. And for new magic, you take a Terrasphere and you just bury it for a bit. It absorbs the energy from the planet and that's how you recharge it. So that already explains two important questions that were left out of the show. Why old magic drains you like it does and how Terraspheres are recharged. I'm gonna get into Terraspheres a bit later, but first why don't we talk about what you can use this energy for. What spells do these wizards have access to? Well, I can already tell you I'm cutting out the portals and teleportation. It's not really important for the story, and it overcomplicates things. To make sure we actually understand what these wizards can and can't do, magic is going to do three specific things. The first and most common thing magic will be able to do is manipulate energy. This comes in the form of your standard energy blasts, force fields, light constructs, that sort of thing. In this version, magic does all come from energy, so learning to manipulate and project that energy is the most common form. I felt this was fitting since wizards in High Guardian Spice primarily fight with laser blasts, so it makes sense for this to be the most common type of spell. Being able to shoot lightning or fire would just be more complex forms of energy manipulation, in a way. The next thing magic will be able to do is telekinesis, basically moving things with your mind. Think Jean Grey from the X-Men, or Kenji from the boys. Moving small objects around will be easy, but if you want to move multiple objects at a time, or larger objects, it'll take more energy. And it'll take training to learn how to focus on certain objects so you don't just drop everything. And the last thing magic will be able to do is creation, or in other words, turning your energy into matter. Now I'm gonna have to be more specific about this so it doesn't ruin the story. 
Firstly, anything you create with magic will always be less effective than the real thing. So for instance, if you made a sword with magic, it would be more flimsy and break more easily than a regular sword. This is so that blacksmiths still have a reason to exist and you can't just magic everything into existence. Also, sorry Aloe, but making food's gonna have a bit of a change. Specifically, any food you create with magic will just taste terrible, it, it'll be awful. To the point where people who are using magic to create food are doing it because they're starving to death. It's a last resort, and it also explains why people would rather cook than use magic to make food. And also more important to note, if you're using old magic to create food, you're using your energy to create the food. So you can't just feed yourself infinitely off of that because it's just the same energy being redirected. So unless you're trying to feed someone else, then you better be using new magic for that. That should summarize everything old and new magic will be able to do in this version. Projecting and manipulating energy, moving objects with telekinesis, and turning your energy into matter. Every single spell will do one of those three things just in different ways. So now let's talk about using old and new magic. When it comes to being a magic user in this world, energy conservation is key. When you use new magic, you're draining the Terrasphere's energy, and I was thinking maybe we could have the little orb things on the end of their Terrasphere's act as an energy meter. Firstly, this just makes sense in the world, because if you're a new magic user, you definitely want to know when your wand's gonna run out of juice. And it could also serve as a visual indicator to the audience as to when someone's gonna run out of energy. Because if that energy runs out, you gotta bury your Terrasphere and you can't use it for a while. I was also thinking that due to the raw amount of energy that Terraspheres can hold, you can only carry one at a time because it might destroy your body otherwise. This is to prevent people from just carrying multiple Terraspheres in order to get around the whole energy thing. You could also implement a system where certain Terraspheres only work for certain people and getting a new one is actually really complicated. If you lose your Terraspheres or it blows up, you gotta go find a guy to make a custom one for you and it's really expensive. And the larger Terraspheres that can handle more energy can only go to people who are very skilled at using new magic because if you try to take a Terraspheres that's too much for you, you might die. Hopefully a few people don't figure that out. I want to make sure that while new magic is more powerful than old magic, it's also not something you can just pick up and use whenever you want. You actually have to train with it for it to work. So the biggest two issues with Terraspheres is that one, they can drain the energy out of the planet and are slowly killing it, and two, the energy can overwhelm you if you're not ready. And now let's get to old magic, because old magic has its limitations too. We already know old magic drains your own personal energy, but what does that really mean? I imagine at first it takes away your stamina, leaving you breathing heavily and losing energy really fast. But if you keep pushing it and using more and more of your energy, eventually you'll start wilting away and turn to dust. Or you'll start rapidly aging, your skin getting wrinkly, your organs shutting down, all kinds of bad stuff. So as an old magic user, you gotta be extra careful not to use up too much energy or there could be deadly consequences. And I think this could be the perfect explanation for runes. In the show, runes are not explained very well, and I think I could come up with something much more interesting as to why they exist. I would propose that old magic users over the years, in order to more focus their energy, came up with a system of runes that allow them to cast their spells. It's basically a technique for micromanaging your energy and making sure you aren't using too much. Instead of just dumping energy like crazy into every spell, you focus it into a fine point so you just release what you need to. Since Terraspheres just have so much energy, new magic users are just blasting willy-nilly without a care in the world, and they know it won't have any negative impacts on their body. But old magic users, due to their limited energy pool, have to be more focused. But imagine, if you will, that you were skilled enough to combine the focused runes of old magic with the overwhelming energy of new magic. If someone could do that, they could release energy more powerful than any other technique ever could. Food for thought. But like I said before, energy conservation is important. If you're a new magic user and you don't know how to use old magic, then once your Terrasphere runs out, you're basically done. And if you are using old magic, you have to make every single spell count, because you're quickly running out of energy, and if you use too much, you might die. I think this element would put a lot of skill into combat, because you need to know how much energy you have, how much you can afford to use, and when you should use it. This ensures that as a magic user, combat isn't as simple as just waving your hand to make every problem explode. Sure, you could insta-kill the bug monster with a giant laser blast, but what if something else comes up and you need that energy later? So there you go, the revamp of old and new magic. It's very simple, but I think it could work effectively in this kind of story.
Both old and new magic have various pros and cons, it's just old magic has a lot more, which is why the Terra Sphere has become such a big deal. But with old and new magic out of the way, why don't we get to potions? Wait, has that energy counter been there the whole time I've been told? Since almost every living thing is radiating magic in this version, if you throw a bunch of living stuff inside of a pot and mix it together, you can get weird results. And after many, many millennia of trial and error, potion users have finally figured out how to mix things in just the right way to get the results they need. It is funny imagining how people figured out some of these potion ingredients. Did they just sit around a cauldron chucking in shit they found on the side of the road that day? Regardless, the spoiled generation's going to be reaping the benefits of decades of experience experimentation. So what do these potions do? Well, based on what I've seen in the series, I think it makes the most sense that potions can do one specific thing, and that is shapeshift you. You just need to take one sip and then suddenly your body will be morphed in various unpredictable ways. Or I guess predictable ways if you're reading out of a book, but who does that? So basically just potions that can alter the way you look and change how to get, get that off my screen. I know I'm ripping things off. Shut up, let me enjoy this. So potions will be able to change the way your body looks and operates, but how much? I think the biggest limitation on this, other than it taking like a lot of ingredients that are hyper specific, is also the more drastic the change, the less time it lasts. So if you're drinking a potion that's going to change your hair color, make you taller or whatnot, it's going to last maybe a couple months. But if you're taking a potion that's going to turn you into a dragon, that shit's probably going to last five minutes. And also, more drastic mutations hold the risk of messing up your body and killing you. You'll notice one of the consequences of going way too heavy on magic is the chance that you might die. You know, it's pretty intense and it definitely encourages you to not fuck around. The more you fuck around the more you're gonna find out. Even with that, potions will still be extremely powerful, and it does make sense since you're throwing in a bunch of living things that have a lot of magic inside of them. Imagine, like, popping a potion and turning into a dragon for five minutes on the middle of a battlefield. I mean, sure, you're probably gonna die afterwards, but you're gonna look really cool, right? And also probably burn down a village or two while you're at it. But for everyone else who doesn't want to sacrifice themselves to become a cool dragon, potions can be used in a variety of different ways. It does actually present a few problems though, like what's stopping you from just taking a bunch of potions to shapeshift into a bunch of different people to get away with a ton of crimes? Or framing someone else? So I'm thinking that unless you're a master potion brewer who has been doing it for hundreds of years in your creepy lich tower, making potions is actually very difficult. Simple ones like changing your hair color or height will be easy to make, but the more complicated ones require super specific ingredients that are almost impossible to find. And we could also use this potion business to explain how Mandrake gets his powers. Maybe the reason Mandrake and Olive are able to shapeshift the way they do is because the Triumvirate have pumped them full of so much potion juice that they can do it at will. They're like super soldiers who have been experimented on to the point they're able to access these very unusual abilities. It would give them a bit of uniqueness to their powers and also explain how evil the Triumvirate are because they're willing to experiment on their own soldiers to do this. And it makes sense since they're apparently super rich and should have access to any kind of potions they want. Potions can also be used for some other things. You, you know, you, if, you, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. You get it? Okay, great. Another interesting use for potions you can throw in is using them as weapons. You could hit someone with an arrow that shapeshifts them into something harmless or mutates them like crazy to the point they die. Tip an arrow with that and you've got yourself a weapon of mass destruction right there. Imagine getting hit by one arrow and then suddenly you turn into a snail. Or more horrific, you get mutated into a pile of goop. There's a lot of things you can do with that, I'm just chucking out some examples. So there you go, that's potions. That got done really fast. Well, no better time to start covering enchantments. Now what's a cool fantasy world without magic weapons, right? The classic sword that can be lit on fire or made indestructible or whatnot. So we're gonna add enchanted weapons too, naturally. So how do we make these special objects infused with spells? The way I think these magical objects could be made is by funneling energy into them. Haha, <laughs> I said it again. Infusing a mundane object with magic. 
since enchanted objects all come from being infused with magic, they'll be able to do the exact same things that old and new magic can do. The difference being anyone can wield them and they don't have to be a magic user. This is how we're going to explain Terra Spheres too. Terra Spheres are just enchanted orbs that have been given the power to absorb energy. Which is something you could do as a magic user, but I'm gonna say it's very hard to do that and very few people actually can. That's why they rely on their Terra Spheres to get that sort of job done. Now, in order to actually enchant these objects, I would imagine you'd have to do some kind of ritual where one or multiple people funnel their power into it. It takes a bit of time, and it would explain why not everyone's using enchanted objects because they actually have a production cost attached to them. Another thing I'll say is that enchanted objects can only be made with old magic, and new magic can't do it. And also, since enchanted objects also use up energy, they need to be recharged as well by redoing the ritual once they run out of power. Think of it like the enchantments in Skyrim, you just gotta shove a soul stone in there every once in a while. The exception to this rule will be Flowering Thorn, which I'm going to give a special little ability to. Let's say Rosemary's sword can also absorb energy like a Terrasphere can. And if her sword gets hit with an energy blast or something, it'll suck it in like a vacuum cleaner. This could explain why magic users are so hesitant to just start blasting Rosemary like crazy because their attacks might get sucked in. And the sword just gets stronger and stronger the more power it absorbs. I feel like this is a fitting ability for a weapon that was wielded by one of the most famous guardians ever. Enchantments can be used in a variety of ways on different objects to give people who don't usually use magic access to magic-like abilities. Now, Terra Spheres can still only be used by magic users because you still need to know how to manipulate the energy within the Terra Sphere for it to work. But almost everything else is fair game. For instance, you can enchant a broom with a type of telekinesis spell to allow it to fly. Or an earlier example, the sword that can light on fire. Or the best idea, a magic napkin dispenser which creates a nearly limitless supply of napkins at a banquet. That's what I would do in this universe, create an infinite napkin dispensing machine, get a patent on that, start a company, and become rich and powerful. That's how you game the system, monopolize napkin creation machines. Was I talking about something? Oh yeah, magic. Yeah, let's, uh, let's continue that discussion. Well, I already covered the important stuff regarding enchantment, so why don't I spend the rest of this video rambling about miscellaneous shit? Now I have a question for you, how are the Triad immortal? The answer to that? Healing water. Healing water in my version is just water that has an insane amount of magical energy. It's typically found deep in underground caves where magic is the strongest. Oh yeah, in this version the earth is a living thing, its core is its heart, and it bleeds magic out into the surface, which allows life to exist. Probably should have mentioned that. I think that's been done before in another story, but I can't remember which one. Final Fantasy, maybe? I don't remember the plots to those games, I'm gonna be honest. But regardless, healing water is kind of like the Earth's blood, and if you drink it, it can heal you up, restore your power, or also reduce your age. And that's why the Triad want the healing water so bad, because it allows them to live forever. And it increases their power little by little, to the point where they've become walking magic batteries that can do almost anything. But you gotta be careful with the healing water, because if you take too much at once, it'll overload you with energy. And remember, kids, what's the consequence for having way too much magic in you at once? You will die. So you can't just down the healing water all at once. You have to take small doses of it over a large period of time to build up your body's tolerance. If I were to explain this the same way Chronicle did, imagine magic is like a muscle in your body. It can be trained just like any other muscle. Just like you need to build up your physical strength over time, magic is the same way. The more you use and practice it, the more energy you'll build up and the more tolerance you'll gain. And just like physical strength, there is a limit to how strong your magic can get. Healing water is a way of pushing past your natural limits. Just like Terra Spheres, but they both come with the same price, that being killing the planet. You're taking energy that isn't yours and using it to push past what nature intended. I think this concept could work with this series, and it's not so different that it completely changes the story entirely to the point where it's unrecognizable. It also does raise a lot of hard questions, like are there natural limits that we shouldn't be allowed to push past, or should we be allowed to do whatever we want? Is it inevitable that new magic will destroy the planet, or can we find a way to use new magic in a more eco-friendly way? Is it unfair for me to monopolize the napkin industry? Well, I'm very interested to hear your feedback in the comments down below. Regardless if you like or hate this new magic system, it's at least better than the magic system that was in the original show. 
If you could even call it a system, it's less of a system and more of a magic clusterfuck. Well, regardless, this has been Dave, and word of advice, make sure to read the labels on the potions before you drink them. Potion seller, I tell you I'm going into battle, and I want only your strongest potions. You don't know what you ask, traveler. My strongest potions will kill a dragon, let alone a man. You need a seller that sells weaker potions, because my potions are too strong.